And now, how we roll driven motion. We talked a little bit about friction in the last board about how it affects rolling down an inclined plane. But it's also important in frictional motion, or in uh, driven motion, and it's pretty confusing. So let's just do some conceptual thinking here. So the simple question usually is, how does a car go forward? What's pushing the car? So let's think about that for a minute. Here is a car to a physicist. Pretty much that there. We'll get a little more complicated, and we'll put an axle on it. And I guess we can even draw like a car. There you go. So inside the car is a bunch of stuff that applies a torque to that axle that rotates the wheel, and it goes forward. Right? We all know that. But the question is, what is the total force that really pushes it forward? Well, it really could only be one thing. If the car is accelerating forward, go back to our ice example. Which way is the friction force between the tires and the ground? If it's trying to accelerate on a slick, icy surface, the wheels are going to spin out. Right? They're going to push against the ice. It's not going to go anywhere. So the ice needs a frictional force to push back against the, uh, the tire. So the tire feels a frictional force forward. And when it's not spinning out, it's actually static friction, right? Because the bottom of the tire is in contact with the road, and it's not moving with respect to the road. So there's actually, if it's accelerating this way, there's actually a frictional force forward on the car. But let's think, what are all the forces pushing the car forward? Well, there's a frictional force, and that's it, right? There's mg down. There's a normal force up. Those cancel out, and they're not pushing you down the road. The only external force down the road is the frictional force, the static frictional force on the tires. And you may think, oh, but the engine's pushing and all these torques. Those are all inside the car. Right? For every one of those, there's a Newton's second law or third law pushing the other way, canceling out. So the internal forces in the engine and you leaning back on the seat and all that stuff, that's not moving the car forward. The only external force in the car, except for air drag, is uh, the frictional force with the road. And that is really an action-reaction pair. The tire applies a force back on the road. The road applies a force forward on the tire. Imagine you're trying to accelerate on a road with dirt on it, a dirt road. What do you do? You end up shoving a bunch of dirt this way. It's because you're applying a force back on the road, and part of the road is loose. Okay? So then a common reaction is, there's no way static friction can make something move forward. Let me show you that it can. Watch this. Here, we have a metal cylinder on a wooden block. Now static friction is going to accelerate the metal cylinder. There you go. Right? I didn't push on the block. The only thing that pushed on the block, or I didn't push on the cylinder, the only thing that pushed on the cylinder was the block and with static friction. OK, so that's a little bit of a cheat. But that is a case where no force other than static friction moved the, moved the cylinder. It's a little bit of a cheat because the thing the cylinder was on is moving. So but anyway, that is a case. Static friction did move something. Here, it's more complicated because the thing that the tire is on is not moving, right? The ground isn't moving. The tire isn't moving. Nothing is moving. There's a friction, static friction force. How's the car going forward? OK, well, here's part of it. Uh, cars are not point masses. Right? I agree with you. If there were a block sitting on a table, and suddenly it started to move all by itself, and you said it was due to static friction, I'd say, I don't think so, and I'd probably run away scared, because magic is happening or something. So for just simple point masses, yes, they aren't going to start moving due to static friction <coughs> unless something else is, is making them move, like the, the, the ground is moving. But remember, part of the rotational motion idea was that objects are not point masses. They have orientations in space. Things can move relative to each other in terms of where they are in space when a wheel rotates. So that is clearly part of the idea of a wheel. But I think, let's see, so cars are not point masses. Uh, so internal parts, this is really the key. Internal parts can move relative to the center of mass. So it's beyond just the object can rotate. It's that there are internal parts moving around relative to the center mass. The center mass is kind of shifting around in the car. <clears throat> well, not in the car, but in other kind of things that move. So let's think about what that means. Um, what that really means, what I'm saying is, it can apply a torque, and it can take this part of the tire that was back here and move it over here and move it down here. And it can use that part 
of the tire to apply a force back on the road to apply a force forward on the tire, right? Which gets translated to the axle, which makes the car go forward. But the idea is that even though this is static, this piece of the tire that's static can be moved around inside the car. Okay? So that doesn't sound too satisfying. But let's translate this. Let's imagine they're just pieces of the tire. Right? What if there were just four pieces that it was putting down and moving forward? That's like you walking. So this makes most sense to me if I switch from the car to my feet walking. All right? So I have this foot on the ground, totally static. Right? I can walk forward and my feet don't have to slide on the ground. So that's a static force, just like the car, a static frictional force. So the way that you can walk is you have a center of mass here and you have your foot here and you use your leg muscles to apply a torque like that. You use your internal uh, muscles to apply a torque based on your rotation point here. This is the center of mass, not the rotation point. So I'm torquing myself around my foot on the ground. And you would think, well, then all you can do is go like this, back, forth, back, forth. But I have the ability to then switch. And when I torque through here, right, and this foot is stuck, is stuck here, right, I can bring this foot around and put it down. So it's the fact that you have internal degrees of freedom that lets you change where certain things are relative to your center of mass and uh, lets you apply really torques. So I think the way to think about walking is little sections where you're really rotating. A little harder to think about that with the car because you have a continuous tire. But if you didn't have a continuous tire, you would say, I torqued from this piece to this piece, and then I torqued from that piece to that piece, and I torqued from that piece to that piece. So anyway, that's just a way to think about it. It's, it's actually very complicated to think about how static friction moves you forward, but it does.